Hello and welcome to the second and last session of our formal student FEA workshop presented by SimScale in collaboration with formal student Germany. My name is Milad and I will be again this week your host and today we are going to continue our journey through the world of finite element analysis and how it can be utilized for designing a formal student car and before we actually start to dive in our today's topic, I would like to make sure that everybody can hear me loud and clearly. And guys, um, we're using a, a tool called GoToWebinar to um, provide you with the live stream of this webinar. And in the case you can hear me loud and clearly, please click on the raise your hand button, which you will find uh, in your GoToWebinar control panel right on your desktop to show me that everything is working clear and fine. And I already can see a lot of hands, so it seems like everything is working uh, good. And just in the case that for some reason um, you maybe also need an alternative, you can also use our toll-free audio service numbers. And therefore you just have to dial one of the numbers, uh, the phone numbers, you can find right now on your screen according to the country you're living in and enter the access code 991502345 once you're asked. All right, it seems like everything is working. So finally, I would like just uh, to introduce myself very quickly. As I mentioned, my name is Milad and I'm the product marketing manager at SimScale. And you might know me from some previous workshops that we offered about form the student and simulation. And my personal background is from motorsports. So I basically came in touch with simulation and FEA and CFD during my work in motorsports, including Formula One and World Rally Championship. And therefore, I'm, yes, very glad to, to be able to, to share my knowledge today with you. And I hope that this webinar session will help you to get started with FEA and thermal simulation on your own. All right. Um, okay, then let's take a look at our today's agenda and like last week we basically split it up the session into two parts and at the very first part we will talk a little bit about the let's say fundamentals of heat transfer so the whole session is about how to uh, utilize the SimScale platform for performing thermal analysis and uh, we will therefore also discuss uh, the most common analysis type related to heat transfer uh, on SimScale. And after that, uh, we will again have a live demonstration where I will show you how to set up such a simulation on your own. And we will talk a little bit about the results and about the homework assignment for this week. For sure, we also have a Q&A this time. So whenever you have a question, just write it down into our question toolbox and I will try to answer all the questions during the Q&A. Well, so let's start with the three different heat transfers phenomena. And this is quite important because basically um, your job as a simulation engineer is very much related to that. And as you can remember from last week, the most important skill a simulation engineer needs to have is that he is able to, to judge in advance um, which physical phenomena are dominant and which are not dominant and so for which uh, needs to be considered and which can be neglected. And regarding thermal analysis, uh, we need to understand first what heat transfer basically is. And just to, to, to make it simple, heat transfer is everything we need if we want to understand how, as the name say, energy or heat energy is transferred through solid and fluid uh, objects. And um, you might remember from college or university, there are basically three, um, let's say, components or three independent phenomena which are summarized as heat transfer. And in every heat transfer process, uh, all of them are involved somehow, but some of them are more dominant and some of them can be neglected. And the first uh, heat transfer phenomenon I would like to discuss with you is conduction. And conduction is basically heat transfer um, between solid substances that are in direct contact with each other. That's very important. 
In theory, there's also conduction for fluid objects, but in, in reality, or let's say in an in industry of all your, all your realistic applications, basically heat transfer is only important for, or conduction is only important for the heat transfer inside solid body, which are in direct contact to each other. And as I mentioned, in theory, it can exist in all three phases, but it's really dominant in solid bodies. And maybe the most fundamental uh, rule or law we learned uh, or I learned at school back then related to thermodynamics and heat transfer was that heat energy passes from hot to the colder end of, of a body or a substance which means um, heat can only be transferred from areas with higher energy with a higher temperature uh, to areas with a low with lower energy so with with lower temperature and there are a lot of difficult, different ways to, to describe conduction, but I think this is the most common you also learned at school. So uh, the heat transferred is depending on um, a temperature gradient. So the temperature difference between the hot and the cold and the thickness of, of, of the part we are um, um, considering and on the cross section of this part as well on the conductivity of the material which is called k here and conductivity is a material property and as better the uh, 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 and as as uh, better this um conduction coefficient is as more rapid heat transfer is happening and a very good example here are metals which are very good conductors and which have very high heat transfer coefficients. And let's discuss about some, let's say, raw conduction phenomena. And one, you can, oh, some different examples you can see on the image on the right side is now conduction of heat in different materials. So here you can see three, three uh, four different materials. And it's a transient simulation, so it's time depending. And as you see, uh, we have a temperature of 290 Kelvin on the lower side, a temperature of 773 Kelvin on the upper side. And now you can see how the temperature fits inside the material is changing. And it's obvious that um, uh, like very conductive materials like Cooper, uh, they are much faster transferring the heat um, in contrast to, for example, ABS, which is a polymer with a quite low conduction, you can see that it takes a lot of time until the heat is uh, like uh, passing through the material. And there are some other applications where it's basically all about conduction. When you think, for example, about your spark plug, I don't know how many of you are, are still using a combustion engine, but if you use a combustion engine, you might hear about the importance of spark plug design and the, uh, an appropriate heat transfer from uh, inside and from the spark plug. And this is something you can quite easily also simulate with uh, a conduction simulation and so on. Yes, and there's a second effect which is very important for heat transfer. And in uh, contrast to, to conduction, which can basically happen in in all three, um, uh, let's say in any kind, in, 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 in for any physical state of a substance, convection is limited um, to liquids and gases. So, so it's uh, uh, limited to fluid. And basically, why conduction is describing how um, energy is traveling through a solid body or through a body. Uh, convection is a process where the heat is traveling with that substance through the domain. So um, basically, a convection is a change is is basically um, heat transfer by uh, by a fluid flow because the heat is traveling through our domain together with the fluid substance, and convection. Is, it's the two things that are very important for convection. First of all, is, is the surface, what is happening at the surface, because if you, for example, take a look at the example on the right, this is showing data center and how it's cooled. Basically, you can see the temperature distribution for two different design layouts for this uh, data center room. And in the end, the convection itself, it's what is it? It's the 
energy distribution or the heat transfer uh, through the flow or with the flow. And for this, we have basically, at some point, we have a heat transfer from the surface of the solid body to the fluid substance. And then we have the convection inside the fluid. And yes, as I mentioned, convection is, is therefore really depending on the streaming velocity of the fluid or the gas. And if it's a, a moving a fast, so a fast moving liquid or gas will take out much more heat from a substance than the static one. And this can be described by this equation where again, Ts and Ta are our temperatures, which are together uh, resulting in a temperature difference. So the temperature difference between the air at the near of the surface and the surface. A is again our section and Hc is our convective heat transfer coefficient. And one thing which is very important, there are basically two kinds of convection, forced and free convection. Free convection is happening every, basically everywhere and, and free convection is basically the result of small density gradients inside the flow. If you think about it, if you have a room and you don't need to have a fan necessarily, but you just have, let's say, a hot surface inside this room, then this hot surface will transfer some heat to the, to the surrounding liquid or fluid. And this fluid, through the increased temperature, uh, the density will drop. And based on the density change, this can induce a fluid flow. And this is then called free convection. Why you can also use a an, an fan, for example, and every time or whenever your, let's say, your, your uh, flow is forced externally by a fan or a pump or something like that, we are talking about forced convection. And there are a lot of examples. The data center is a very nice one because it basically shows how a small change, design change, can massively um, impact um, the to uh, global flow field. But there are other examples. Like if you think about uh, a light bulb, an old, old, old school light bulb, there you also have convection inside um, the bulb. Or if you think about uh, if uh, cooling of, of a heat sink, then the heat inside, how the heat is transferred inside the sink is described by conduction, but the cooling of the heat it's, uh, itself is described by convection. And there's a third and, and final um, phenomena or principle of heat transfer, which is called radiation. And radiation is something, um, yes, a little bit different compared to the other ones, because basically, uh, as the names say, radiation is about waves. And like 100, 150 years ago, scientists, uh, 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 it, uh, people and researchers found out that um, there is also the possibility to transfer heat with waves. And basically, yes, you, you may know it, there are a lot of there is electromagnetic waves. And depending on the wavelength, uh, it can be light or visible light for us, ultraviolet red radiation or let's say what we know as infrared radiation, for example, which is a very good example for heat transfers to radiation. Uh, so when I go out for a coffee, some coffees, you know, they have these external heaters, which are like um, big lamps. And this, if you stand in the near of these lamps, you can really feel the heat. And it's basically a, a very prominent and good example of heat transfers through radiation. And the very important thing about this kind of heat transfer is that in contrast to convection and conduction, we don't need any medium at all. Uh, really think about it. Um, for conduction, at least you need a material. And it's the same for, uh, you need a solid material or, or another material. For, uh, for convection, you need a fluid material. Without fluid, it's not possible, but radiation, uh, there is no medium required, and heat can be even transferred in empty spaces by by this thermal radiation. And the very important thing about radiation is, uh, I don't want to go too much into detail, but you maybe hear it about uh, about it at school, and you might remember that radiation is really only dominant for very 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 high temperatures. For example, if you think about our sun, that's a very good example for radiation because actually there are some particles coming from the sun, but all the light from the sun is basically traveling as radiation through the space 
and when this radiation like hits our atmosphere, then it becomes again transferred in some other kinds of heat, like convection, which is uh, predominant in our um, atmosphere. And for for um, radiation, it it basically depends on on the materials you use on, and uh, let's say the power or the energy transferred through radiation is depending basically only on the temperature of the um, two um, surfaces included in radiation. So in this case, for example, we have two objects and and uh, also it depends on the cross section from some natural constants and um, from uh, coefficients. And this example is really showing you what I was referring to when I uh, uh, told you that it's very important for an engineer to judge which effect is dominant and which can be neglected. So here we have basically the same example. And on the left side, we simulated this heating uh, of a spotlight only with convection, show, so we neglected radiation completely. And on the right side, we also considered radiation. Now you can see the temperature again, and you can see that there is basically some difference, but this difference becomes larger and larger as high as the temperatures are. Yes, and why did I told you that? Well, uh, I told it because it's um, quite important to have this in your mind when you want to set up your own simulation. And now let's just quickly talk about the, let's say, three most important analyzers types related to heat transfer, which are available for you at some scale. And here you can see the three examples. We basically have an analyzer type for, for solid heat transfer, what we call conduction. We have a um, heat transfer, some analyzer type for convection. And we have an analyzer type called CHT, conjugated heat transfer. And why this conduction module analysis type should be used if you're interested what is happening in a solid, the convection analysis module can be used if you're interested how heat is transferred inside a fluid. And CHT stands for conjugated heat transfer. And in theory, in its CHT, every, every time you want to uh, consider both at the same time, fluid and solid heat transfer. And here you can again see three very good examples. So for conduction, it's really just a solid heat transfer simulation of a heat sink. The convection simulation is like the, the hot air flow, air flow um, inside a in, in, uh, uh, clean room. And CHT is showing um, the cooling of um, electronic devices and the heat uh, just or the temperature distribution inside the heat sink and the, the platines and the boards as well as the heat distribution inside the fluid and the flow and basically that's a big big difference so CHT is combining conduction and convection and let's make an example to understand this so uh, we have this electronic board and we want to do a simulation it's a closed enclosure it's a closed enclosure of this board and we want to predict the maximum chip temperatures and now we have well, so what is happening on a physical perspective from a physical perspective um, we have these chips on this board and these chips are heating up uh, and then the seat is transferred through the boards and what we want is to transfer the seat out of our board out of this device and here we have again two effects we have convection and conduction we have conduction inside the uh, processors or the and inside the board and inside the housing itself but we also have conduction uh, uh, and the conduction is happening inside this enclosure because there we have air and it's a closed environment and so the one option, which is maybe the most accurate, is to do a convective heat transfer simulation, which means we're simulating the uh, fluid domain and the, the solid domain together and coupling the simulation results. So we are simulating how the, uh, let's say, the uh, hot uh, board is changing the fluid flow and how this fluid flow is changing the temperature of the board. And this one is 
slower, so it takes a lot of time to set it up, but also it needs a lot of time to calculate, but it's much more accurate. And another solution is, an approach bow is to, um, not to simulate the convection, but only the conduction, and for a lot of phenomena, um, basically it's possible to, to quickly assume a good um, convection value or a good convection coefficient based on some table books and everywhere where you know that your convective heat transfer is much more dominant a conduct conductive heat transfer is much more dominant than your convective one and here for example we don't have any fan and then we can also try to do approach b which means we will simulate only the solid heat transfer uh, take a good assumption for the for the convection and this solution is much much quicker and less accurate on the same time and now let's take a look so this is a visualization of the approach one so approach a so the full chd simulation and here you can see both basically we can see the streamlines uh, of the air inside the enclosure and we can also see um, the the surface temperature on the chip and this gives us for sure a lot of information. So uh, if we are not 100% able to understand what is happening inside this um, solid body, inside the board, a lot of times that fluid flow um, simulation allows uh, you to better understand what is happening. But I mean, let's now take a look at this one. It's again the... Um, full CHG simulation and on the left side basically on both sides you can see the surface temperature of the board but on the left side the, the slices are showing the velocity distribution while on the right side the slices are also representing the temperature and in the end of the day what is very important is that the difference between these two results are uh, between these two approaches is, is very small sometimes. For this example, uh, the difference in, 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 in uh, uh, surface temperature was below 1%. But you can um, run around five um, conduction simulations at the same time you run one CHT simulation. So the second option is much more efficient and usually I suggest whenever you, you start to, to, to work with simulation and you want to use the seed transfer analyzers, um, you first of all should try to keep it simple and maybe start just with a convection or a conduction simulation. And then if you see or if there's a need for more accuracy, you can make the simulation more complex all the time you want. But what I want to tell you, a lot of teams contacted us or contacted me who wanted to start with um, heat transfer simulation, especially for the battery cooling or for the electronic engines. And most of the time, they, they really started to make it too complex. And therefore, and I suggest really start with a simple, simple example, and then you can still make it a little bit more complex. And basically, this is a standard setup we can take, uh, we can use for for every heat transfer simulation where we just want to to uh, take a look at the conduction or where we think the conduction is dominant. First of all, we will only apply thermal loads like temperature and surface heat fluxes, and on the other end, heat loss is only possible via convection and radiation. And this makes a lot of things easier because we're basically decoupling the problem. And the very important thing is that um, this kind of simulation does not take into account any mechanical changes. So um, if you're not only interested in, uh, let's say, um, how the heat is transferred to your uh, heatsink or uh, through your, your cooling module, but you also want to understand how is this changing the mechanical properties, you might need to run the thermostructural simulation. And yes, as I mentioned, um, you should use a heat transfer at the beginning because it's fast. And it's also relevant for cases 
where only thermal study is required. Uh, if you know that, for example, I never heard of a cracking heat sink, you know, I never heard of a, a heat sink cracking due to, to mechanical reasons. And um, therefore, um, often of times, a better solution. Right, so a lot of things are quite similar to, to our structural simulation and still we are talking about FEA. So um, this conduction simulation is pure FEA. And one thing we have not talked about so far are contacts. And wherever we have similar, uh, a lot of, of different or, or even similar uh, bodies which are connected to each other, we need to tell the computer there is actually a physical connection. And in this case, just imagine you have this board made of one material and the chips which are made of different materials. And then you need to connect them. And this is done by using so-called bounded contacts. And there is some recommendation you should strictly follow. First of all, um, try to adjust the uh, contact tolerance and uh, ad and uh, adapted for a uh, optimal uh, heat transfer simulation result. I will show you how to do this just during our live demo. And whenever you have contact, you have to define a slave and a master surface. And you should always make sure that the slave surface is smaller than the master surface. Yes. And now it's time for our um, live demo. I saw there are already some questions, so let me give you just one minute to sort these questions and then we will uh, instantly go on with our live demo. Guys, sorry, I'm back. And we had a lot of questions about the fundamentals, and especially people were interested in how to judge which effect is dominant. Um, well, this is for sure something which depends also um, on experience, but let's try let's try the following. Let's take a look together on the live demo of Prepared, and I think that this will answer a lot of questions. All right, so um, today we will focus on engine cooling simulation, and we want to perform a, a heat transfer analysis of this engine cooling uh, system. And this CAT data was provided uh, to us by um, a former student team from Germany. Thank you again to the e Motorsports Cologne. And um, yes, based on this model, we will show you how to set up such a simulation on your own. So basically, again, we need to have three components. And this is very similar if you think about it to the structural simulation. We first of all need a geometry, in our case, a CAT model, which we need to simplify and prepare for the simulation. We need the material properties, which we can get from a library or a database, and we need the load pass. And there are basically three kinds of loads. We have three aspects. We have the thermal behavior of the material. We have heat source as the input and heat dissipation as the output. And uh, this is uh, just an example. And now let's try to get started with it. So first of all, we need to do so-called CAT cleanup. And we talked about it last week in detail. But what does it mean is that um, the, the, the CAT model you use for, for manufacturing and for design is a little bit different than that model you need for simulation. And the aim of our perfect CAT model for a simulation is as simple as possible and as accurate as necessary. And if you take a look, for this model, we mainly removed a lot of screw connections. You can see here, we really removed all the holes. Um, also here, inside, there. And we just made sure the model is watertight. And then what's also helping a lot is um, doing or performing boolean operations, which is reducing the number of bodies. Because actually, if you have two parts made from the same material, um, for a lot of cases, you can just merge them. And you can assume that there will be an ideal heat transfer through them. And then you can just merge the parts, which makes the model handling easier. In the end of the day, you just need to prepare some imprints for defining contacts between those two bodies. Right, now let's take a look at our, our load case. So 
inside this part we have water and this water is like should ta uh, taking away the energy the heat and outside we have these two heat sources and from wh which are connected to the electrical engine to the um, uh, power unit of the of the race car and if we would do now CHT now, we would basically simulate exactly what is happening inside this fluid flow, this blue one. But since we want to start simple, we will do a heat transfer simulation only, where we will assume convection for the running water and we will assume convection for the surrounding air. And as you can see, the convection inside this running water is much, much higher than the convection inside the surrounding air. And we have a heat flux of 70,000 watt per square meter. And these are basically our, our loads. And as I mentioned, we are modeling the, the flowing water using an effective convective heat, trans, uh, heat removal coefficient H. And we're using the same approach for the convection of the surrounding air. Okay, now let's take a look at the simulation setup. Sorry for that. Yes, and here, everybody can see it, this is a project. And okay, first of all, we have the cat model here. And let me just hide it so you can see the two parts. These are the channels where the, where the water is flowing through. So here's the water inlet. Here's the water outlet. And yes, then we have this top part, which also contains these channels. And here, here and here, we're adding layer to the load. First of all, again, we need to create a mesh. And the cool thing is that for this kind of geometries, Lowest of the time, the full automatic measure generates a really good result. So here we just added a new mesh operation, fully automatic, and then this mesh was created, which took around 10-15 minutes. And here you can really see like that how um, the mesh size is automatically adapted um, through the to the curvature of our model. Can see it especially here everywhere where we have edges and, and higher curvature we have a finer mesh and don't forget we in the end of the day our local accuracy is represented by the density of this mesh so we're just calculating values for every node of this mesh and as more nodes we have as more accurately we can resolve gradients the next step is to set up the simulation itself and the first thing you have to do is to choose uh, your simulation type. In our case, it's heat transfer. We do a steady state simulation. Then you have to choose the geometry. In our case, it's the mesh. Uh, the mesh. It's the mesh we just created. And then the next step or the next thing uh, we done is we create a topological entity set to simplify our further work. I just want to show, show you what I mean. So we have one topological entity set here, including all faces uh, for, for the later boundary condition, which are involved uh, in the convection. We have the same for the top plate here. This one, and which is also very important, we have one set here, so the slave set, and the master set here. This one, if you take a look, here we are connecting the two halves of the model, and then we need to define a contact for master and slave and this is the tolerance and there you should choose a reasonable value now it's one millimeter which is quite high you could even decrease it a little bit and this is something you have to play around with it's depending on your mesh size and the, the total scale of your model and once this is done you just need to define the material in our case it was made from aluminium so we added this aluminium material properties to both parts and then just need to define the boundary conditions and in our case um, we had the source 
heat flux here so here the heat was coming in then we have the outer convection with air which is relevant for all outer surfaces except those ones here which are like where the heat is going in and inside we had all the surface where we had water convection and that's basically it then you just need to um, create a new simulation start the simulation on this one takes only four minutes because we did a steady state simulation with a quite coarse mesh and that's it finally you can take a look at the results by clicking on the three post process on the solution fields item and now um so the simulation result is loading and we can even take a look at the 3d results well so this is a temperature distribution we can also take a look at the heat flux we can change the scale of the color legend for example make it a little bit lower and we can even cut through it like this And now we are, for example, taking a look inside and let it change now to temperature. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Okay, and now, for example, what we can do is make the solid, show it. And change the opacity and now we can take a look we can even move that slice so like five millimeters put five millimeters higher yeah and and, and that's a funny thing. Basically, here what is missing, this is where we would accept to have the water. And here you can really see how the heat is transferred from the surface of this water channel and how it's changing. All right, and that was our live demo. So let's take a look at some of the results. So the temperature ranges for 1,600 watt is we have a maximum temperature of 87.6 degrees Celsius, a minimum temperature of 62.7 degrees Celsius. And we can really predict all the temperatures inside this part. Um, if we can make it more complex, make a CHT simulation out of it to precisely predict the cooling rate of our total system. And the best thing is that we really now have, we can really take a look in to the physical part and that helps us really to understand how the design can be improved to increase the conduction and, and the heat transfers through this housing. Here you can, for example, see um, heat dissipation hotspots. So most of the heat is dissipated in these corners here and here and here inside this, what is expected in this case inside this uh, channel system and very funny or very interesting is for me that we also had here this hot spots and yes to put it together uh, this simulation showed that the temperature distribution of the cooling plate is less than 115 degrees celsius which is a requirement because otherwise the parts will break and um, using a, we could also use a higher convective coefficient value uh, for the flow water um, and uh, so the great thing is based on this simulation we actually can now investigate how we can even change the design so make the part for example lighter or more robust until we reach this critical temperatures 
And if we use a higher convective coefficients value for the flowing water, it will uh, consequently also lower the output temperature. And therefore, this simulation can also be used to investigate like how uh, improvement of the convection will uh, improve the overall, let's say, overall uh, um, uh, quality of your heat transfer, efficiency of heat transfer. And yes, this is, I think, a very good example how to get started. Right. Um, I answered a lot of questions so far in the chat. And um, if there are no more questions, um, if there are more questions, sorry, just write them into our chat box. Now I would like to um, discuss with you your today homework assignment. And therefore, we again have prepared the step-by-step -step tutorial, which you can find again in the forum. And there you will find the recording from tomorrow on and also detailed uh, instructions how to set up this simulation on your own and your homework is to create the simulation and submit it within the next seven days. And now, um, yes, uh, we have some, some, some final questions. A question by um, Yash is, how is the extent of convection and conduction realized in each of those approaches, A and B? Okay, let's get some slides back. So if we have approach A, we are simulating both the convection, so the airflow inside this domain as well as the conduction inside the solid body and both simulations are coupled. Why uh, variant B we only do a, uh, 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 we only simulate the conduction so we only sim do a, basically a solid heat transfer simulation and instead of modeling the convection inside we will just model it using a boundary condition. Max wants to know if it's possible to do dynamic simulation with the changing heat source. Yes, for sure, Max. This is possible. That's not a not a big deal. The only thing you have to do basically is here to choose transient instead of steady state. Then Yash wants to know, was this imprints for contacts uh, is used in CAD cleanup? Well, um, let me explain it like that. Um, in reality, this is one flat surface. And here are two electron parts here and here are the electronic engines attached. So here's a contact surface. This is a contact area. But for our simulation, we need to split up the faces. And therefore, we created this imprint because it made it easier for us to add the heat load. Then, um, uh, a lot of people ask if we can simulate um, brake disc. Yes, for sure that's possible and you can do basically both. You can do a terminal analysis of the brake disc itself. But uh, related to Antoine's questions, uh, you can also uh, do a CHT simulation of the brake and use this to um, get an idea about the change in convection uh, on a rotating brake disc that spins slower as more pressure uh, is applied by a caliper or something like that. That's not a problem. We can basically do that. All right. It looked I answered all your questions. And then there is oh one one final question I think by Yash, and Yash wants to know if CVT cooling can be investigated using approach A as well as approach B. Yes, I think you're talking about this uh, uh, continuous vehicle transmission, right? So we're talking about the automatic gearbox. And for this, for sure, you can basically use both approaches, but again, it depends on what you're interested in. If, let's say, you are really interested in the heat transfer from the housing, from my experience, you don't need really to, to, to or you can neglect 
convection. If you are interested like what is happening inside the system, you should maybe do a fluid flow simulation. All right, guys, um, thank you very much for your time. It was a pleasure to, to be your host for the last two weeks. And if you have some more questions or if you just have an idea or would like to discuss something with us, please reach us to us using the forum. And don't forget to submit the homework because submitting all two homeworks will qualify you for a three certification. Yes, I hope you enjoyed our trip through the world of uh, engineering simulation. I wish you a nice week and hope to see you soon. Bye.